Hello everyone. So, uh, obviously with the current situation as it is, we just wanted to release some really quick how-to videos on how to create uh, meetings using Zoom um, and other applications. Uh, we do have obviously the Teams one. Um, Zoom runs very much the same and is what we will be using for people um, when we do our hub events. Uh, but I wanted to show you how you can create and schedule a meeting or a webinar. Um, and then also we'll then show you what it's like um, when you're in it. So um, let's create a meeting with someone. Now Zoom you can sign up for, they do have a, a free version of the account, which means you can have up to 40 minutes worth of meetings with people, or you can pay for uh, an extra account, uh, like a, a, the next level up if you want to. So when you sign into um, Zoom, you'll be able to create your profile here. Um, now, if you want to create a meeting, it's very simple. You just go to the meetings over here, and then you want to schedule a new meeting. So as it goes, the uh, hub training sessions will all be hosted as webinars for people to sign into, um, with then the speakers, um, on there and then the mini mastermind will be done as a meeting um, and obviously we'll, we'll explain everything that goes on. So when you schedule the meeting you can obviously create your topic, so let's just call this test meeting. You can add a description if you want to, you then pick the date that you want the meeting, so you know whenever it is, the time that you want. Uh, the duration for meeting, time zone. If it's going to be a recurring meeting, then you can set it. So if you're going to have a meeting every Monday with someone, you can set it as a recurring meeting. Um, you can opt to have people uh, re register for the meeting. A lot of the times you won't need that because you'll be inviting people. Um, don't have to worry about this setting. Now, if you want there to be a password in the meeting, you can put that. Realistically, I don't think it's much needed, so you just want to untick that. On the video, uh, you want to say we want the host videoed and then participants videoed as well. This setting you leave uh, as it is. And then you have more options here so that you can say, you know, I want to enable people to join the meeting before I do. Generally, obviously, if you're having a meeting with one person, you kind of don't want that. Um, but if it's multiple people, you could do if you want to. Uh, mute participants on entry, so that basically you don't have a, a big uh, mass one. Uh, waiting room that you can have, uh, only authenticated users, breakout rooms and record meetings automatically. So you can have all of that in there. And then you can have alternative hosts. So once you've decided what you want on there, so let's just say for instance, we want to mute everyone, automatically uh, but the rest of it is fine um, and then you can hit save and then you can see here you've then got your meeting scheduled so you can see all of your options here and then what you can do is then you've got this here this invitation so this is the link that you want to be able to join this meeting okay so that's what you would send to anyone that's going to be in it now you can do this, which is copy invitation, which sends it that from Zoom. Um, or the easiest thing to do, just highlight this link here and then create a new email. Send this one to Claire. And then you can send that and then all she has to do obviously you can put a little bit more in there but all she has to do is uh, click on that link and then it'll ask her to go into the meeting now you can once you sign up for zoom there are a lot of training videos which I'll just show you if you go to resources here and then video tutorials you'll be able to see sort of a lot more in-depth breakdown uh, of everything that we've got here um, so that you'll be able to sort of understand how everything works. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a, a brief in overview sort of in one condensed place. 
Um, so that is how you schedule a meeting. I will be showing you in a second um, what happens then when you hit start meeting. So uh, if I hit this, start this meeting, what will happen is this will come up, this window, and it says uh, Zoom wants to open this application. You will just hit open Zoom and then wait for it to do its thing and then it should pop up in a second. There you go, and then you should be able to see me. So you want to join the computer with audio. And then once you're in the meeting, you'll be able to see here all sort of the applications that you have. So you can mute your mic at any time, uh, and you've got options here as well. So, you know, it's very simple. You can have different microphones, so on and so forth, switch to phone audio, all these kind of capable things. You can stop your video at any time if you want to. So if you don't want to be seen by someone, then you can stop the video. Um, and then again, you've got more options here. So you could use different videos. More functionality you've got is you can invite anyone to the meeting. So you've got default email. So if you wanted that, I just click on this button here. And then it creates the same reminder as we had before. And then you could just put the people in does exactly the same with the uh, Gmail and uh, Yahoo Mail as well. And then you can copy the URL and copy the invitation if you want to send it differently. You've got the option here to share your screen. So you can literally hit share screen and it gives you all the options. And then that will appear um, on the other, the participant screen, which I will show you in another video how people will see it. Uh, and then you've got, again, more options, you know, only one participant can share, multiple can, so on and so forth. You can add reactions. Uh, and then you've got here more options here. So if you're having a meeting with lots of people, uh, you can manage your participants here. So as you can see, there's no one in here, but you can manage them. Uh, you can mute everyone, unmute everyone, um, so on and so forth. Uh, you have a chat function where you can then chat to everyone. So if there is a meeting of, you know, more than three people, generally the chat function is quite good because you don't want everyone talking at the same time because it just becomes inaudible. So you would have the option to mute everyone and say, look, we'll chat on here. No one speak over each other. This is me. And go on from there. Uh, and then a lot of other ones you can record. So if I wanted to, I can record this meeting. So now what will happen is after the meeting, it will then store what we've just recorded, um, ready to be either rewatched or so on and so forth. Uh, again, a lot of this is what we will be doing for the hub so that people don't miss out on everything. And uh, then you have the options here, you know, you can you know, go stop recording. And then you have the option here, which is breakout rooms. Now breakout rooms is good if you've got a meeting of people and you want them to go away and talk to each other. You can create a breakout room, which will basically then divide people up and they will go into their own meetings uh, with just say two people, three people, however many people you've got in. You know, if you've got six people in, you want two breakout rooms, that will divide it up for you. And then you still have control. You can go in and join any breakout room at any time you want to. And you can also uh, go on and then you can call everyone back. You just hit button and it basically says to the people in the host, you've got 60 seconds, the breakout room is closing and then they'll instantly come back to the main meeting. So, you know, for instance, when we do the hub sessions, when we say, right, get into groups, this is how we would do it. We'd push everyone into a group and then bring everyone back to then the main talk again. So, you know, the, the process of everything that we do and the way we're running will be exactly the same. And then you have the option here, which is to end a meeting. So you can simply just hit end meeting here. And then you've got the option. You can either end the meeting for all or you, you personally can just leave the meeting. But if you want the meeting to keep running, you would need to assign someone else as host. Um, so generally, if you're the one hosting the meeting, then if you're leaving, everyone's going to be leaving. Um, but you can up here. If you hover over participants, obviously it's only showing myself at the moment. You can hit more and then there's the option there to be able to sort of reassign a host. Um, 
Now on here you can share files uh, with everyone uh, and obviously you've got a lot of options here um, to do it. So that's briefly how a Zoom meeting works. Um, I will show you how the webinar works from this end and then I will now do another video, a couple of videos uh, with from your from a perspective of someone else that you've invited to a meeting. Perfect. Right, so let's end this meeting. End meeting for all. And you can see here, because I was recording it, it's converting that to a recording. Uh, and then where would I like the recording to be saved? So I could pick a folder um, anywhere. So if I just say videos, OK. And then that will now save that. And you can see it just, here we go, Zoom 01. And then I can load that up. And then that will play the meeting that we had. OK. So that is then how you do, how you start and initiate and then run a Zoom meeting. Okay, everyone. So now that we have um, seen how we set up a meeting and how we get it sorted, we now want to see what a meeting will look like to people that you invite to it. So it's not much different. Um, so I've just emailed myself an invite from Emma. Let's click on the link. Okay, and again, open Zoom, exactly the same. Okay, so this is then what you're presented with. So just mute the computers, otherwise you're going to get double audio. Um, so you can see here, join audio, so start video, and then you can see um, how it then looks. So your profile, your picture will be up here, your recording, and then the recording of the team or the person you're speaking to will be here so that you'll be able to, to see both. And then again, if you have multiple people up, you'll be able to, to see them all along here. And then you can change the view. So as there are more people, it will put everyone in for you. And then again, the options are exactly the same. You can unmute, you can stop the video, you can invite people to it, so on and so forth. You know, there's not much uh, options that you don't have uh, when you're in a joint meeting, just very limited. You can start, you can record if you want to, um, and so on and so forth, and then you have the option to, to view it. Um, and then what, the, what it will do is you can have, say, speaker view where you can only see the person speaking, or you can have gallery view, which is where you'll see it as you're seeing it now. Um, and that's pretty much what it will look like for anyone with a that's doing the meeting with you. Um, so that's what a Zoom meeting looks like on the other hand. Okay, so now you know how to set up a Zoom meeting and how it will look for yourself. Uh, the next thing to look at is potentially, if you're much like the Biz Hub where we offer online training, a meeting necessarily isn't going to work because it can be a bit of a nightmare to manage, in which case you would want to uh, set up a uh, webinar. Now, with the webinars, you do have to have the paid version in order to do this. Um, so it's just something to think about. If you don't need it, then then don't do it. And again, like I say, there's a lot of training help that you can have through Zoom. This is just sort of a quick brief overview for everyone. Now, setting up a webinar is exactly the same really as a meeting. So you go onto webinars here at the bottom and then you hit schedule webinar. Again, you would just pick up a uh, test. Uh, you know, the, what the topic is, you'd enter description, date and time, how long it's going to, recurring, all this is exactly the same. Again, generally you want to turn off require a password. 
Always put these on, is what I say as a general rule. Audio stays the same, and then you have these options here. Now, Q&A is always enabled because generally as part of a webinar, you want people to be able to ask questions. But what will happen is I'll show you that functionality in a moment. Um, and then you really, again, you can enable a practice session if you want to. Uh, you can do this, and then obviously you can record the webinar automatically. Um, and that will do that for you. Uh, and then you can hit schedule. Now with the webinar, there's then some extra settings that you've got. So all this works exactly the same. So the dates, everything. But then you've got some extra settings in here. So you've got the options to upload some branding to your webinar, uh, which, you know, if you're going to do it a lot, is something to definitely do. Uh, email settings, so on and so forth. So you've got all these options here. Uh, the main one is you've got this option here. So if you are doing a training session and you've got someone speaking for you as well, then you would act as the host and then you want a panellist. So what you would then do is you would edit this and then you would add a panellist. And then they will get a specific invite saying that we're adding them as a panellist. Um, and then again, you've got the link here to be able to send two people to then be able to join, which is what we will be doing for you guys. So then you want to start this webinar. So exactly the same as when you start a meeting. So open Zoom. So just wait for that to load. So this one then does work slightly differently. So again, joins computer with audio. So all the bottom here is very much exactly the same, except you have, um, generally I always hit participants so you can see who's in here, and then you've got all the controls here. Now, panelists appear here, and then if you've got any attendees, which obviously we don't at the moment, they will then appear here so that you can see what's happening and then as you can see at the moment it's automatically started recording because that's what we asked it to do um, again the, again the panels along here work exactly the same so this is a good function um, so when you're doing it you would have uh, the host uh, so us would have this open and then you would go on and type your questions in and I'll show you how to do that uh, in a second and then the host would be able to either stop uh, the speaker from speaking and ask the questions if it's the right time or basically find time or answer the questions of as and when they can. Then you've got the option to share your screen again and you can see here, so who can share? Well, you either want all panellists to share and who can share when someone else is sharing. Generally, the settings that it has are the settings that you'll want it to have on there. And then you have more options here. So you could go live on Facebook if you wanted to, live on YouTube. You can invite people to it, you can open up the chat if you want the chat opened up, uh, so on and so forth. You could create a poll if you wanted to, so if it was like how many people use live video streaming, you could create a poll and then they could go, ah, well here you go, you know, 60% of people don't use live, so let's talk about that. Um, and uh, yeah, everything else, the functionality is pretty much the same. You don't have breakout rooms in here because when people join to listen to the webinar, they will only be able to see your face and the uh, panelist's face. So uh, they won't have their face showing, which they will do when they are in a meeting because it's sort of a different, a different process. So that's just something to remember that you can't subdivide people in a webinar. Um, it just doesn't work. Um, but then you have got more options down here. You know, if you wanted, you could allow everyone uh, to speak up. Uh, always allow people to raise their hand, uh, which basically means like they have a question or, or something. It's like, uh, hello, can you speak to me? And then you can go on and talk to them. Um, and then, yeah, basically the generally the settings that you've got here are the ones that you would want. When you do it, um, there are a couple of um, views that you can have on here. Um, now, when it is, it is... Uh, this view uh, is where you can split it and if there's a shared screen the shared screen will appear sort of in the bottom corner sort of here 
and then the speaker's pictures and the, the panellists will appear here so that they can share their screen, go through the PowerPoint and see themselves at the same time. So, you know, you'll still get the same hub experience, um, but that's how you set it up. I will now do a one so that you can see what the meeting is like from the other side. Let's end this meeting, end meeting for all. And then again, that just goes back to the main screen and then it says converting the meeting to a recording so that if we do decide to record it, <coughs> then you have got it. <clears throat> now with our hub sessions, um, everything will be running exactly the same. So the uh, members in the spotlight will be run as a webinar um, and then people will be able to listen to it back. <coughs> and then the hub talks will then be run through Zoom and then we will then film them uh, we'll save the recordings and then they will be uploaded to the website with any information um, needed. So you won't miss out at all. Okay. Okay, so let's say uh, you want to host a webinar or you just want to see how our webinars will, will work. So what will happen is you'll get an email invite with a link. So again, let's just go back to my emails and you can see that Emma has emailed me a link here for a Zoom meeting. So if I now select that, again, it will automatically launch and it says open Zoom. Do I want to open this? Yes, open Zoom. Now the difference in this is that uh, when you join, it will ask you to enter your email address do that Org. and hopefully it should automatically do this now hopefully it will just remember you for all future uh, meetings but if it doesn't it's as simple as that and then you hit join webinar so now that the webinar has loaded you'll be able to see that you've got these are your options here so it's a lot different from when you normally do a meeting um, now, at the moment, it will automatically record, so you'll be able to see yourself, uh, you'll be able to record everything that you do. Now, the options that you have here, I'll do it across two screens, um, is you've got the chat option here, which again, you can chat to all panellists, um, or, uh, you know, just the panellists or panellists and attendees. Uh, you can raise your hand, which basically means that you've got a question, you've got something you want to ask, um, and you can then also start a Q&A session. So I can type my question, which is, how do you do a Zoom? Question mark. And then you can either send it anon anonymously or um, thingy. And then what will go on here is you've asked a question, and then the speaker will be able to respond, which I can do now. So you've got the option, they can either answer it live or you can type a question. And then if I type the answer in, uh, watch the video. So then you can see here that I've responded to the, the question for you and all questions that anyone asks will then go up here so you'll be able to see a full list of all the questions that people ask as and when they ask them. Now the thing to remember with this is what you don't have to worry is the only people that are going to be filmed or that will be seen are the host and the panellists. So when you join it you don't have to worry uh, about yourself being on the camera, you won't, you won't be seen You'll be in a list of people, but your camera won't be on. It'll only be the host and the panellists or the people that are uh, actually giving the talk that will be in it. So that's all you have to worry about. Um, and then again, it's very simple. Uh, from your point of view, you can then just hit leave meeting here and then I will leave the meeting. And that is then what the Zoom meetings will look like for us. Okay, now if you have any questions, uh, do not hesitate to ask.